All right, I wanted to elaborate a little bit on um, on squish bands, or what I'm calling here, for lack of a better term, I'm calling it squish land. So I've drawn uh, four examples, four crude illustrations um, to kind of illustrate things. Um, one, two, three, four. So we're going to start at number one. You get your setup off the, you get your saw, you take it apart. Um, you see that you have about 40 thousandths of an inch. We're call, I'm going to call this squish land. This is a two dimensional representation of what we know is, if we're looking down at it, it's a, a disc. It's a donut, a little tight disc when the piston's at top dead center. And it's serving to squish and support the central charge to encourage it to burn quicker. Um, that's what we, that's why we like compression is it, and it promotes quicker burning. Um, there's only a very, very quick short phase during which burning is occurring and peak cylinder pressures can be achieved that influence the remaining cylinder, average cylinder pressures through the remainder of your, uh, of your, 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 uh, crankshaft rotation for one cycle. So you get it off the shelf. It is a 40,000 squish. Um, you have an eight millimeter band if it's a 54 millimeter cylinder, uh, if it's a 50-50 surface area squish band. You cut so that you have, you know, base and or band so that you work it to 20 thousandths squish clearance. That's uh, everyone's first move for good reason. Um, you're reducing in half the amount of uh, fuel that, or charge, good charge, good viable charge that's in squish land. And this isn't just a surface area because it's three dimensional, so it's volume. Um, now, it's not wasted. It's not wasted charge. You need it to provide the both the uh, pr inward pressure against your combustion pocket, but it's also acting as a liquid coolant. Uh, a lot of people don't understand just how large of a role liquid cooling via gasoline plays. Um, so. We are successful, we've successfully cut our band, reduced in half the amount of fuel being wasted, still have plenty for liquid cooling the surrounding surfaces, and we've increased the uh, velocity um, and pressure of the inward push of the ring when the piston's at top center. That's great. What's not great is that we've increased the uh, surface area of squish land. Uh, so it's actually, even though it is cut to half, vertically we did lengthen it just a little actually 8.2 millimeters from eight it's actually probably more like 8.05 or something i didn't bother with a calculator because i'm trying to keep this really simple um so number three this is where the ideas on optimization were were being discussed and what i really wanted to show and uh illustrate clearly here let's say that on uh, the gray is where the original one was Obviously, you can see that I have an outline of the original. The original just happens to match the original in the first example, obviously. But on the second example, now it's dropped 20 thousandths, and the piston is always at a fixed height because the crankcase and connecting rod are fixed. So, all right, so we take our squish band and we rotate it a couple degrees, one and a half to like two, two and a half degrees, rotating it on the center axis. So that brings it down this edge and brings this edge up. Um, I know that for it to be 18 thousandths and 22 thousandths, um, it would be more like three or six degrees. And um, as far as I understand it, we want to be about one and a half to two and a half degrees when we're doing, when we're trying to control the movement of gas. Um, five to 10 degrees is really more for acoustics as far as I understood it. I was told on OPE forums that a seven degree slope had ruined a cylinder. I disagree strongly with that, but I never tested it. And in fact, I would bet my life that it would still run adequately, just like a saw with a uh, 60 thousandths squish will run adequately. It's just not optimized or anything. So we optimize here by having an angle. This angle makes it so that we are having a quicker squish velocity coming in, uh, greater quench. Um, the problem, the one drawback, or there's a problem with this. By doing this and increasing velocity, that's great, but we're not seeking, it's not like an exhaust tract where we're seeking to expel. We're just seeking to squeeze this area. So having this be a little bit tighter is actually beneficial because it'll create a thinner interface, meaning less mixture and dilution of the uh, mixture between the two and dilution of the two. I mean, we're uh, this, this flame is fighting to propagate its way through that pocket. The last thing we need is to pull charge from there and introduce it. Um, so by having this choked out a little bit, we can uh, 
we can we can have a tighter little uh, we can have a tight little squeeze and really increase velocity right at that last little second. But that's uh, but the question is how are we going to do that? Because you know right off the bat we want to cut that edge, which is already hurting us. It's making it kind of like a megaphone, like a like a musket uh, opening, and that kind of flare is going to be the exact opposite of what we want for a really quick tight like punch uh, of uh, inward pressure from that ring. So what I was trying to uh, explain verbally and it's just so much easier, so much easier with uh, a visual aid here. If you have a pop-up um, disc or dome on the piston, of course it has to be cut in such a way, and I don't have the equipment for this myself, um, but it would need to be cut in such a way that your pop-up obviously fits your chamber um, without slapping. However, as soon as it's made that clearance, every bit inwards that you cut, you're changing it from, like you have a, let's say that you have this, uh, this tract that's 18 thousandths to 22 thousandths, and it, open, and it expands into the chamber at say 24 because of the edge that you cut right there, you can make it, if you align this just right, because these discs are usually 10, 20 thousandths tall, by getting this, by nailing, uh, by optimizing and uh, 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 properly uh, uh, cutting your pop-up, you can make it so that right at the, you know, half, or let's say one degree before top dead center, which would be around here, one degree before top dead center, it starts to exert effect, effect. And then right at top dead center, depending how far you have it cut, you can have it so it's a tight little choke and it will be such a hot spot it'll burn the corner off that pop-up. Or you can have it a little bit looser so that that, uh, that 22 thousandths passageway becomes a spiked 18 thousandths passageway. And yeah, that is a hot spot, absolutely. But it's only a hot spot for, let's see, about half a degree and then another half a, yeah, you see what I mean? Like another one degree maybe. So very quickly the piston, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the, uh, the height of the, the pop-up being so small, it only exerts this uh, pinching effect right at TD, uh, top dead center. And otherwise it's almost as if it weren't there. You know, a, a little 10 thousandths disc is not affecting anything when, you're, when your piston's over here. Uh, whether it's on the uh, compression or downwards on the power stroke. Um, so, yeah, um, uh, the, 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 the ramping or choking or uh, jumper effect of a, uh, of a disc, or especially a, a, a domed pop-up disc, would be the ideal. And uh, Iron Horse mentions uh, cutting it to match. Um, I would love to see more examples and uh, people, like visual examples in people's videos, because there's cutting... The, the, there's cutting the, uh, the part of the piston to match this band, then there's cutting the edge of this to match that. So there's two different areas to contemplate when doing these matches. And as this kind of uh, uh, interface right here, the very lip, the very edge, the entry, the interface between squish land and combustion land shows, we don't want necessarily want a homogenous, uh, a homogenous uh, 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 angle on everything. Um, actually, in fact, you could probably argue that there would be a slight benefit to some kind of multi-taper, like, a, but, but we'd be talking such nonsense, tiny angles that, uh, the, the, the significance would be next to nil and the practicality of doing it wouldn't be worth it. So it'd be like beyond diminishing returns. And that is constantly something that we're, uh, we're looking at is whether we're, chasing diminishing returns and in fact we are often very often and that's why you know you want to learn what you're doing and the next time that you build something it's built a lot better it's not like anyone would recommend that you take a top end apart to correct some little thing on your squish band it's just to understand it better the next time you do it anyways that's my thoughts on squish i hope that that is illuminating and i hope that people can give me some uh thoughts in response it would be appreciated thank you for watching and please please subscribe if you found it any value in this. Thanks. Bye.